Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Builders and Bricksters. Today I'm very excited to introduce you to Ralph, Head of Data at BridgeFund. It is great to see you again, Ralph. It's great to see you too again, Sergio. Thank you for having me. No problem. So for today's session, we'll be talking about what BridgeFund is doing. We'll be covering credit risk management and how data and AI helps with that. We will focus a little bit on security and privacy and Ralph will share his key uh, lear learned lessons with us. So let's start from the beginning. Um, Ralph, what is Bridge Fund and what problems does it solve? Yeah, so Bridge Fund on one side uh, is what we see is that we see enthusiastic SMEs who work really hard to make their business successful. But when they're in need of money, they're less and less likely to be able to turn to a bank as the banks increasingly withdraw from the SME lending market. Although SMEs make up for more than 95% of total enterprises in Europe. But on the other side, we also see successful entrepreneurs or other wealthy individuals that are in need of return. Bridgefund is the platform where supply and demand of money meets. And some fun facts about Bridgefund. Uh, they were founded in 2018 and were based out of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, we have approximately 70 employees and the amount landed till date is over 200 million. And on an annual basis, we analyze approximately 100,000 applications. Bridgefund is a rapidly growing company. And with that, Bridgefund entered the Deloitte Technology Fast 50 in the Netherlands. This is a competition that annually showcases the very best of the fast growing technology companies out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are some very interesting numbers and congratulations for that. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, what activities does Bridge Fund carry out in the context of credit risk management? Yeah, there are many activities in the credit risk management space, uh, but I want to highlight two that are particularly, re particularly relevant in this situation. The first one being credit risk analysis. And this involves evaluating the credit worthiness of a potential borrower. Credit analysis conventionally uh, includes financial statements to determine the borrower's ability to repay a loan. This is where bridge fund deviates from traditional business models in the SME lending space, because we believe that bank transaction data is much more relevant to determine the credit worthiness of an SME. Bank transaction uh, data provides our machine learning model, the information to create very up-to-date, even up until yesterday, cash flow analysis, allowing us to determine the loan capacity of a potential borrower. The second one that I want to highlight is portfolio analysis. So that's everything that we already have provided, but also potentially rejected. So using all relevant data, and this includes historical data of over 60 million bank transactions, um, data around loans provided, loans rejected, but also the current loan performance. We pick in external data through public registers and other data sources. We use all of that data to improve our credit and risk scorecard and determine unfavorable or favorable trends across outstanding loans, typically requiring actions to be taken. Okay, so you mentioned credit risk analysis and portfolio analysis, right? So can you tell us a little bit more about how does Bridge Fund use data risk to carry out these kind of use cases? Yeah, so when a customer requests a loan on our platform, they go through a well-defined guided process that aims to get all the requirement information in with minimal to no disruption in a single flow, all to collect a complete dossier right from the start. And as part of this flow, we collect customer data, but we also bring in data from third parties, such as the Chamber of Commerce, credit agencies, and open banking providers. All of this data is sent to Databricks for further processing. So beyond just those bank transactions, we also look at the industry that the customer is active in, the legal structure that they have, outstanding debtors and creditors, private loans, and much more. We extract a lot of features out of the data, such as dependency on clients, such as dependency on suppliers, returns and cancellations, and the percentage of the uh, turnover, but also private income and cash withdrawals as an example. So within Databricks, we often refine that raw data and make it ready for analytics and data science applications. We apply a product thinking lens to the data and we follow a domain-driven design approach towards organizing our data. So for us, 
bank account information, including bank transactions, is one of those domains. Customers is a domain, but also loans, loan transactions, and loan requests that we have in our system. And for us, there are two types of uh, products uh, on the platform. We call those analytical products. On one hand, you have the typical BI products, typical reporting and dashboarding, all about insights and hindsights. And on the other side, we have AI-based products, uh, AI assistance, machine learning models that help us to make the right predictions and that often act as an assistant to employees. So as mentioned for us, architecture is multidimensional, but in the visual currently showed, uh, data flows from left to right. And as it moves from a source towards its application, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we do to enrich the data and make it ready for consumption. Um, one of the things that we do, and this is more technical in nature, but we make use of property and tags throughout the flow of data. Uh, because from a functional perspective, it's really important that we stick to the domain driven aspect and the data mesh philosophy. So we apply those technical tags and we register the medallion architecture as part of tags and properties instead of physically storing it according to those structures. Now, this is really important for us because the domain itself, it takes full ownership and responsibility over security and privacy, and especially the right to access the domain data or not. Uh, for us, this is important as a financial company because often BII data is involved. And for us, security has been top of mind all the way from the beginning. And together with, with Sergio, your help obviously, and with Databricks, uh, we have put the emphasis on security being a first-class citizen of the platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sounds like you work with a lot of sensitive data and privacy and security is, has been a priority for you, right? Yes, yes, a top priority. Can you, can you talk about security and privacy features of Databricks and how they protect sensitive financial data? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So these for Databricks, security and privacy are the number one priority. So regarding privacy, if we talk about privacy, we need to be talking about data governance. And we have a solution for that called Unity Catalog, which among many other things, it enables access control list to access to the data. So for example, if there are users and groups that they need access to data, you can restrict these permissions to either read, write mode, certain tables, all these kind of things. And you can even do it at column or row level. Also to enhance privacy, it is also possible to create views so that certain columns can be masked. For example, if you want to train a machine learning model using a certain column, but you want to also be privacy friendly, you can replace that by a pseudo anonymous ID. So still the model can learn stuff, but privacy is concerned. We also have stuff like audit login in near real time. So when somebody changes a permission or somebody access a table, etc. All this information is logged and this is also necessary for regulatory reporting. Now, on other aspects, on the uh, more like GDPR, we also integrate well with Delta Lake and in uh, financial services companies, usually they own a lot of tabular data. So it is very efficient to either anonymize or delete PII data when required by the law. Now on the topic on security, we are compliant with the standard security certifications such as SOC type two, SOC two type two, GDPR, PCIDSS, which is um, necessary to handle credit card information. Also traffic network is encrypted out of the box it is also possible to encrypt data at rest when it is stored in containers, buckets. We have an integration with SSO. And on top of that, we also run um, a lot of scans to detect vulnerabilities on the software, many other things like this, right? Now, uh, something that is also very important to highlight on Databricks is that um, we do not store data in a persistent way. So we have this hybrid architecture where there is a component called the control plane where um, you can find things like the uh, front end web. So when somebody goes in a notebook, all this happen, all this is happening in our infrastructure. But we have another component linked to this that is called the data plane. That is uh, where the data actually resides. And this is 
stored in the um, customer accounts. So AWS, GCP, Azure. So in this way, the customers remain owners of their own data and we don't uh, store the data at all at rest. Um, now, on top of this, we also support a network restriction. So it's possible to deploy data breaks on a VPC and VNet to avoid that data are leaked to the outside world. But anyway, going back to BridgeFan, how does BridgeFan leverage this data and AI to decrease the lead time to grant a loan? Yeah, so BridgeFund has been doubling its business every year since it, was, since it was founded back in 2018. So if you take, for example, the time it takes to process a loan, which let's say is around 30 minutes, and you get a thousand requests in a month, and it takes you 10, 10 people to process these loans, if you're doubling down every year, it means next year with 2,000 requests a month, you need to have 20 people. Now, obviously our goal is to break out of this vicious cycle and to be able to scale our business beyond also scaling in people. So to achieve this, we have split up the initiatives into two phases. So phase one for us is about having an AI assistant that support the risk analyst through the process of assessing a loan and assessing the credit worthiness of a borrower. So with this, we already aim to reduce the time spent and double down the productivity of a risk analyst and also removing uh, the human bias that is potentially out there. Phase two for us is all about allowing the model to take autonomous decisions without human interventions, only accepting human overrides. This will certainly not be for all loan requests, but we will do this for the ones that are qualified as having low risk. And for us, this is already a huge step forward because throughout phase one, we build up the confidence in the model and we use the feedbacks and we use the learnings from phase one to improve the model and make it come more natural as we migrate over to a full-blown autonomous decision-making in phase two. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like Bridge Fund is relying on automation to grow quickly, right? Yes, 100%, really much relying on that. And talking about the lake house, um, how is the lake house architecture adding value to bridge fund? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, and to me, there are a couple of things that I really want to highlight here. Uh, the first one being flexibility and collaboration. The fact that there's one structured layer of data as a foundation on which you can build these analytical products, whether it's BI or AI, you always know that the foundation is the same. Um, that's really paramount as we look at flexibility and collaboration, because whether you use share SQL queries, you work with dashboarding, reporting, or with notebooks, you know for sure that it's always built on the same foundation of data. Second to that, I would say security. Databricks provides a couple powerful features on top of the data, such as Unity Catalog and the way of handling users and groups in combination with single sign-on and user provisioning. Um, that's really important uh, because fine-grained security controls are a must in the fintech space where we are basically part of. Uh, but I also don't want to forget simple things that are part of the platform uh, that sound quite small but provide a huge business impact, such as sharing of uh, elements and objects, uh, sharing SQL queries, sharing reports and dashboards. By just using those uh, features, um, we get adoption in the company a lot quicker. And yeah, going back to your experience um, in your career, for CTOs and CDOs in financial services in the financial services sector that are looking into modernizing the data architecture, what are the top three lessons that you have learned? Ah, oh, that's a good one. Um, I think the first one would definitely be security. We we already touched upon this a couple times throughout the conversation but it's okay to take some extra time to design your identity and access management setup on Databricks. With Unity Catalog in combination with the underlying cloud provider, in our case, AWS, uh, setting up single sign-on, setting up user provisioning, pass through credentials, it's already making it difficult enough. But when you to try to provide team autonomy and you try to follow a data mesh philosophy, uh, things will become even more complex quickly so it certainly doesn't hurt to take a week or two extra to hash out these security designs, especially in the FinTech space. Uh, the second for me would be data quality. Uh, Databricks enables you to go fast, 
but low data quality can quickly put the brake on things. So quick visibility on data and data quality by out of the box features within Databricks, such as the data profile tab in every notebook, uh, it gets you informed on the potential data quality issues quite quickly. And as you try to remediate them or temporarily provide a bypass through your data pipelines and implementations, um, you also need to make sure that you have a constant feedback loop back to the operational teams so they can solve it at the source where it should be solved. Um, and for me, the third one is platform automation. Databricks uh, is a versatile platform. It provides you a lot of features and functionality, uh, but you can easily, yeah, you can easily lose sight of what you want to accomplish by the wealth and variety of features that you have available on hand. So together with a consulting partner here in the Netherlands called Revo Data, we invested massively in platform automation, being able to deploy uh, Databricks, multi-cloud, multi-account, uh, with different workspaces in one single go, completely pre-configured in a way that you have domains and team autonomy, uh, was really paramount to push a project forward in a short span of time. So I would say those three are, are most likely the most important, uh, yeah, that we have in our system. Mm -hmm. So security, data quality, and platform automation. 100%, yes. With this, uh, we reach the end of the session. So we cover what BridgePan is doing, how BridgePan is managing risk, automation. We focus a lot on security and privacy, and you share with us some key learnings from you that are relevant for CTOs and CTOs. So thank you very much for joining today, Ralph. You're welcome, Sergio. It was a real pleasure. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.